Welcome to the Deutsches Tank Museum in Munster for another in the series Inside the Tanks. Today we're going to take a closer look at this, the Panzer IV, the backbone of Germany's Panzer forces throughout World War II. It was in service in one form or another from the beginning to the end and it's a tribute to the soundness of its design that it remained capable of giving a good account of itself on the battlefield, even though it was increasingly up against bigger, better armed and better armoured tanks. This example is a relatively late model, the Ausführung G or G version. Nearly 1700 of this type were produced from mid-1942 to mid-1943 before it was replaced by later variants. At the outbreak of war, Germany's panzer divisions were widely equipped with Panzer I's and II's. But even then, these were only light vehicles, better suited to training, and it had long been obvious that replacements were needed, and replacements had been planned from as early as 1935. The result was the Panzer III and the Panzer IV, the three manufactured by Daimler-Benz and the four by Krupp. At the start, different roles had been planned for both, with the four designed as an infantry support tank, and the lighter three designed to engage enemy armour. But that would soon change once Germany came up against much tougher tanks in Russia. Krupp's prototype for the four was armed with a short 75mm gun and quite thin armour and went to production in 1937. But real life on the battlefield soon highlighted the need for more protection. So from then on, the Panzer IV's armour was constantly upgraded, either by simply bolting on extra plates or replacing them with thicker ones. The construction of the Panzer IV was typical for its day. It is basically flat plates welded together, with some attempt, like here on the turret, to angle plates so as to offer better protection. The tank is effectively three boxes, the engine compartment, the fighting compartment with the turret, and the front or driving compartment. By the time we get to this G variant, front hull armour had increased from an original 15mm to 50mm, and would later add another 30mm plate to bring it up to 80mm. The side armour and the turret armour were both increased from 20 to 30mm. Size-wise, the Panzer IV was similar to the Sherman, although slightly lower. It was taller than the T-34-76 and about the same length overall. It weighed 25 metric tonnes, a little less than the T-34-76. Thanks to its 12-cylinder V12 Maybach HL120 engine, which delivered around 300 horsepower. The whole thing had a useful maximum road speed of 42 kilometers per hour and a cross-country speed of 16. The suspension remained constant throughout the production run, with leaf springs on four bogies on each side, each carrying two wheels, offering good weight distribution and simple maintenance. Just like its armor, the Panzer IV's gun was continually upgraded throughout its operational life. This vehicle here has the long 75mm KWK-40. Where tank guns are concerned, the longer the barrel, the greater the punch, and length was expressed as a multiple of the gun's calibre. This gun started out with a length of 43 calibres, and then quickly moved to 48 calibres. This could penetrate up to 97mm armour at 1000 metres, which gave it more than a fair chance against just about all Allied tanks until very late in the war. Its main ammunition was the Panzer Granata 39. Secondary armament consisted of two MG34s, one coaxial with the main gun and another in the front hull fired by the radio operator. Crew access was pretty good. The driver and co-driver, who was also the radio operator and machine gunner, had hatches above their positions. The commander had his cupola in the turret roof and the gunner and loader had hatches in the turret sides. Inside, the layout is quite conventional. I'm sitting in the commander's seat, inside the turret. Above me is the commander's hatch, and you can see the vision slits in the cupola. It's pretty cramped in here, and you can see it being more cramped with all the ammunition storage.
By the end of the war, more than 8,000 Panzer IVs had been built, making it by far Germany's most important tank in terms of sheer numbers. The two final variants after this one, the H and J, saw further moves to strengthen the armour and simplify the construction. But it was clear that the fall was reaching the limit of its life. The most obvious extra armour were the side skirts of mild steel, designed to detonate hollow charged projectiles before they hit the hull. These weren't much liked by the crews as they were easily damaged in rough country and often had to be removed. Following German practice elsewhere, the Fours' very good chassis was used as the basis for a range of other vehicles, like the Sturmgeschütz IV, which mated the chassis with the Stug III superstructure, and the Jagdpanzer IV, which was a more thorough redesign as a dedicated anti-tank weapon, using first the 75mm L48 and then the L70 gun of the Panther. So good was the Panzer IV that even when the war finished, it still continued to be used by Bulgaria and Romania, and a number, amazingly, even saw action in the Six-Day War of 1967 in the Syrian army. So that's the Panzer IV then, a thoroughly well-designed and well-made tank which was developed consistently and which maintained its presence on the battlefield long after others had disappeared. Arguably, it should have been replaced long before. But the pressures of war and the teething troubles which plagued later German tanks ensured that it hung on and became the only tank of all the combatants which was in action on the first and last days of the war.